Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. My name is Richard Betts, and I'm joined by Nicole Dines, Paul Strom, and Dan Innes. Um, Nicole, let's start with you. What, what, what things have you been watching this week? Well, I followed Real Asset Media's Global Outlook 2022 briefing, which focused on, on key trends ahead. And there seemed to be a lot of optimism around, a real feeling that we're on the road to recovery. Thomas Weith of PwC said there's confidence is very high, the outlook is positive, not just because the pandemic is out of the way, but because of, we hope so, but also because foreign investors are coming back. I mean, American and European investors never really went away. They already had a strong presence last year. But this year, there's a strong expectation that investors from Asia Pacific will, will will come back uh, with a vengeance, as it were. So there's a lot of optimism on that. As far as the key trends themselves are concerned, there's a feeling that, um, you know, real estate will, uh, is changing. One of the key trends is um, the expansion of the investable universe. While uh, last year in the climate of, of, if not fear, certainly caution, people tend to go for for core and safe sectors. Uh, This year, there's an expectation that they will look at a lot more sectors and also ESG is driving the trend for repurposing buildings. You know, there's obviously a need to comply with ESG regulations. That's something that's a very big trend that we've talked about many times and all investors are following it more and more. And it's driven by investors themselves as well as regulation. Uh, And so this is leading to to repurposing. And RES is a big element of this because it's mainly office buildings that have been repurposed for residential because there's a big demand for, for residential. Um, so that's that's an interesting trend. And on the residential side, another trend that, that PwC highlighted is affordable housing, uh, because obviously uh, the, you know, the S of ESG is coming to the fore, the social aspect. So uh, many companies, for example, Allianz Real Estate, are investing heavily in social housing and combining returns for investors with this sort of social impact. The one concern that we all talk about is inflation that is growing. So on the one hand, rents will rise, and that's a concern. But on the other hand, Real assets have always been a refuge in times of high inflation. So, and even even geopolitical tensions. We, you know, obviously now the obvious case of uh, the tension between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, even that is uh, tends to lead to to people fleeing to safe assets and to real estate. So even trends that might be negative in general seem to be positive for real estate. Yeah, that, that focus on flight to quality was really interesting. I think also from the financing side there with Serge from Berlin here. And interesting to see in, in the news as well that picking up on that point around residential that Patrizia um, has just launched a new fund dedicated to impact investing and they're intending to channel 500 million into affordable housing and social infrastructure. So just interesting to see that trend trend as well coming through in the news lines. Um, Paul, what have you been following? Well, we, we've seen a lot of news stories in the last week that really confirm trends that have been forecast for 2022, and which continue the pattern established in 2020-2021, with some very large commitments being made for sectors such as residential, healthcare and, and logistics. A, a lot of these trends are actually described in the CEO survey that we undertook for the latest edition of the Real Asset Insight magazine, which is now downloadable at the Real Asset Insight website. There are also some very interesting insights there into the changes in strategy that have occurred as a result of the ongoing health crisis. Uh, anyway, earlier this week, we saw Spanish private equity manager Azora launch a vehicle focused on developing build-to-rent property in Spain. The new vehicle, Brisa, is being backed by an unnamed uh, global institutional investor, and in- including Leverage will have about $1 billion, uh, to invest, and it wants to develop more than 8,000 u- units in the next five years. And Spain's sh- uh, shortage of homes uh, uh, for rent is estimated at about $2.5 million over the next 15 years. So there's evidently plenty of room for for the uh, new platform. Then again, just as we were hearing a lot about the demand for a a more varied offering for senior care, in particular one that doesn't just envisage elderly people going into a care home, but allows for independent living, Jersey-based property fund manager Activa MSG Capital Management announced that it's establishing a retirement village development platform in the UK. It talks about providing different levels of care spanning what it it calls the the full continuum of needs. And its first retirement villages will be established in Birmingham and near Southampton in the UK. Those two projects will be worth about £220 million in total and will provide 290 independent and assisted living apartments for sale. 
plus there'll be for the 90 care bedrooms uh, of uh, in, in, a, in a care home. Lastly, in the logistics sector, the Netherlands headquartered CTP has taken over and delisted Deutsche Industrie REIT, which has become the CTP's Germany arm. It has plans to spend about a billion euros on expanding and improving the portfolio in Germany. The move means that Germany now represents approximately 15% of CTP's portfolio and provides its third largest market presence after Czech Republic and Romania. CDP has put Udo Sterkel in charge. He was formerly principal and managing partner at advisor Avison Young in Germany. Sterkel said that the portfolio has lots of opportunities to add substantial value through upgrades and, and active asset management, and the company envisages growth coming from last mile and infill development opportunities around major urban centres and uh, uh, science and technology parks. That's interesting. And we've obviously got a, a session coming up on life sciences, health tech um, and precision medicine. I um, mean, that's certainly a growing trend. But I also saw that La Française had made an investment into healthcare in Lyon. And I also noticed AW's urban logistics allocation um, reaching 200 million and also plans there to invest more over 2022. Dan, what have you been watching? Well, it's been a week where the UK government's long awaited white paper on levelling up was published and it was pretty much welcomed by most institutional investors in the real estate industry. And it includes government support for 20 UK towns and city centres through ambitious King's Cross style regeneration projects. And, and one of those being led, you know, leading on that is, is Homes England. You know, there are various people contributed to that announcement. Um, Adam Winslow, chief executive of Aviva, he said, you know, it's good to see the government focusing on measures to help our communities thrive and to improve well-being, particularly in areas that currently struggle to compete. Um, And so on that note, um, this was also the week where plans to transform Morecambe Seafront in in the northwest of England into a £125 million outpost of the Eden project. Those plans were given the green light and they're due to open in 2024, not too far away. And the project's going to be linked to the Eden Centre in Cornwall, but it's going to be focused on Morecambe Bay. You know, it's hoped that that's going to dramatically improve and boost the local economy, same as it did in St. Hostel in 2001. Um, and it could create up to a 1,500 jobs. But, you know, the team behind the project's now, now focusing on securing funding for the project. Um, and they've, they're looking for about £70 million pounds of government money for the project. Elsewhere, Henderson Park, they've acquired a portfolio of three office assets in Milan for 221 million euros uh, from Italian utility firm A2A. That office-led portfolio makes Henderson Park's first transaction in Italy and further extends its reach across key European cities. The largest property in that portfolio is 18,000 square metres of office space, which occupies an entire block in Milan's historic city centre. Henderson Park, uh, pretty active at the moment. They're looking to reposition assets to take advantage of increasing demand uh, for new prime and amenity-led office space uh, with strong sustainability and wellness uh, credentials. Uh, So one to watch there. And lastly, London's West End, they're set to receive £190 million worth of support from Westminster Council um, in an effort to revitalise the district post-pandemic. Around £150 of it uh, is going to support the investment into redesigning Oxford Street um, and the Oldwich Strand area, um, just slightly across uh, from, from what we really are familiar with being the West End, um, to make it a lot more pedestrian friendly. Um, part of that funding is going to be used for a series of, of public art installations as well to drive that tourism factor, which is so important, as well as a deep cleaning program as well, which is going to um, revamp the streets. But, but you know, the council's also made a fresh call to central government to introduce a sales tax uh, for online players to help sort of level up that playing field with bricks and mortar retail. Um, and it's also int- it's also calling for uh, the reintroduction of VAT free shopping. So um, lots of levelling up in different ways this week, Richard. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how that levelling up comes for- through in terms of the online versus bricks and mortar retail for certain. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Dan. Um, thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the week in real assets. Thank you.